Welcome to our lecture online. Here let's try another couple of functions, meaning let's find the Laplace transform of those two functions. The first function is f of t equals t, the second function f of t equals t e to the minus at. All right, the standard form is that the Laplace transform of a function is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of that function multiplied times e to the minus st dt. All right, let's plug in the first function, see what we get. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t e to the minus st dt. Now you take a look at that integral and go, wow, how do I do that integral? Well, you go to the uh, table of integrals, or maybe you remember it. But yeah, the integral of that in general can be done like this. The integral of um, x e to the ax, or I should say, yeah, ax in general, that is equal to um, e to the ax divided by a squared times ax minus 1. Now the difference here is that instead of a, of course, we have s, and instead of positive a or positive s, we have negative s. So that means that this becomes a negative, this is negative a squared, and this becomes a negative, so make sure that we adapt it for a particular integral. So this then becomes the following, this is equal to um, See, that would be 1 over s squared, or negative s squared, but that becomes 1 over s squared, times e to the negative st, we have t instead of x, and then we multiply that times a, which of course is s, or negative s, times the variable t minus 1. And that, of course, would then have to be evaluated from 0 to infinity. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do that in two steps. So this is equal to, the first step would be, uh, we can put the s there, so we have, uh, um, yeah, 1 over s squared, let's do it like this, e to the minus st times minus st, evaluated from 0 to infinity, and then minus 1 over s squared, e to the minus st, times the minus 1, evaluated from 0 to infinity. Now this is easy to do, but what about this one? Well, what happens when we plug in infinity? We have a t over here and we have a t over here. And at first you say, well, we end up with infinity, so we can't solve that. But notice this is an exponential decay function. And as t comes, becomes large, this becomes very small, much quicker than this becomes large. So if this tends to go to zero quicker than this goes to infinity, the product of this will always equal zero. So in other words, when plugging the upper limit, we end up getting a zero. When plugging the lower limit, we get a zero as well. So this whole thing cancels out. Then we're just left with this portion right here. And so what we get here is this is equal to um, 1 over, or minus 1 over s squared times, when plugging the upper limit, we get 0. Plugging the lower limit, we get 1. So we have to subtract 1 from that. And then you can see that if we apply that, this is equal to a positive 1 over s squared. So here we can see that the Laplace transform of the function f of t equals t is simply 1 over s squared. All right, what happens now when we have t multiplied times e to the minus at? How does that affect everything? Well, we can try that here. So we have the Laplace transform of now the second function of t, which is equal to the integral, again, from 0 to infinity of f2 of t times e to the minus st dt, which is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of, this now becomes t e to the minus at times e to the minus st times dt. All right, so what we want to do here is try to make it look like that. So we're going to combine those two exponents. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t times e to the minus, and I'm going to reverse the order, s plus a times t dt. And then realize we have the exact same integral, but instead of having just the s up there, we now have the s plus a up there. So the whole thing will be the same. We can still use the same principle right here. But instead of s, we're going to have s plus a. So this becomes equal to 1 over s plus a quantity squared 
times e to the minus s plus a t. So I'm going to multiply this times a is then of course uh, s plus a, s plus a times t and that would be minus 1. Okay, but this is going to have to be negative because it's negative exponent, so negative right there and put parentheses around it like that. Okay, now I think I got it correct. So instead of having, ooh, and that's still a minus. So we have a minus 1 over s squared becomes minus 1 over s plus a squared. We still have um, e to the minus st, well that becomes e to the minus s plus a t. And instead of having minus s t minus a, we get minus s plus a t minus 1. All right, so now we have the very same thing as we did before, but instead of having uh, simply an s, we have an s plus a everywhere. So we're going to evaluate that from 0 to infinity. And so put brackets around it. And again, the same principle holds here. This is multiplied times that. And so we can see that e to the minus s plus a t will tend to 0 much faster than s plus a times t will go to infinity when we start plugging in bigger and bigger and bigger numbers. So in essence, that portion cancels out. So therefore, this is equal to this multiplied times that, which gives us 1 over s plus a quantity squared times e to the minus s plus a times t evaluated from 0 to infinity. So we don't have to worry about that first term because that will tend to go to 0. Now when we plug in the upper limit here, we get e to the negative infinity, which is 0. When we plug in the lower limit, we get the following. So this becomes 1 over s plus a quantity squared times e, oh, I'll take that back because now we're plugging in the limits, times the upper limit gives us 0, the lower limit gives us a 1. We have to subtract when we plug in the lower limit. And since, did I forget the negative here again? Yes, I forgot the negative again. There we go. And then the negative negates the negative, and this gives us a positive quantity s plus a quantity squared and that is the Laplace transform of the function f of t equals t times e to the minus a t. So that is how we find the Laplace transforms of those fairly common types of functions that you might end up uh, running into when you try to solve some circuits. So we'll see later on how we apply this to the solution of circuits. So stay tuned and we'll get there.